Well, we are so pleased that you're joining us for this special feature, Coffee with a Commissioner, and we are so honored to have our first guest. We have Chairman Jack Bright joining us. You're kicking off our series, Mr. Chairman, and we're so glad to have you. Well, thank you, uh, Lisa. I appreciate the opportunity to be here and let our citizens know a little bit about, uh, more about what the uh, commissioners do and how we come about being here. Well, you know, we definitely want to talk about that. And we also want to talk to you a little bit more about um, you and your family and, and your lifetime of public service that those of us who know you know that this has been a commitment for you for a very long time. And so the first thing we want to do is you all have just begun your new terms not even six months ago, and you are currently chairman of the Onslow County Board of Commissioners. That's correct. Um, talk a little bit about your time as a commissioner because you've had a variety of service with the commission. When I retired uh, from the police department in 2000, um, the sheriff come over and said that we got some openings on the board, said the election's coming up. He said, I think you'd be a good candidate for office. And I actually run uh, and filed as a Democrat and ran, ran and I, I got elected and I was number three uh, in the pecking order for votes uh, mm -hmm. during that year. Served uh, till 2004 and then as time went on, uh, Oslo County had evolved in uh, Republican domination mm -hmm. and Oslo County mainly went uh, Republican. But I was always conservative. I, up until even to this day, I've never voted for a property tax increase. So that was my proof that I was a conservative and my values uh, and my family's values was has always been conservative. So and uh, since I had been a Republican before, I switched my party back in 2006 and mm -hmm. then uh, one of the commissioners stepped down to run for another office in 2008 and then I was appointed unanimously by the board that was sitting then to fill that commissioner's spot. And um, then in 2008, I, I missed it by a few votes uh, even as a Republican, but mm -hmm. then I decided to run in 2012 again, and then uh, I received top vote in the primary and the general election in both 2012 and then in 2016. So now I'm working on my third term, well, three and a half terms, because right. I was uh, appointed and served for one year in 2008 as a commissioner. I enjoyed every minute. I've been serving the uh, people since I got on the police department in 1970. Uh, after after high school, um, I, w I took a job with a shoe store over in New River and right. I, I worked as uh, my way there up to manager of that store. Uh, I think it was, uh, if a lot of people might know, Tom McCann. I was going to say the Tom if, McCann if store. Anybody, over. anybody ever heard of Tom McCann shoes? But then uh, as time went on and working in that capacity over in New River, I worked uh, uh, up to the point of being the manager of the store. And I had a lot of individuals uh, that worked on the police department that was coming in on a daily basis on while they were walking the beat. And they convinced me to um, sign up for the police department. So when I signed up for the Jacksonville Police Department, uh, I signed up initially as a reserve in 1969, and that didn't last very long. Uh, I fell in love with the work, and yeah. um, then I got hired in 1970, and I stayed there on the police department, one place, Jacksonville PD, for 30 years. How about that? I worked in every single post. I held, held every rank. Uh, that was available except for chief, and I didn't want that. But right. I started out as a patrol officer and worked my way up to deputy chief of police till I retired in 2000. That is, you know, again, this whole conversation that we will be having with all of the members of the board is this notion of public service, um, and that this is something you began very, very early. I mean, now, now more than. 40 years, almost 50 years of public service that you've given. Well, when you, um, when you work in a law enforcement agency, I don't want to say that gets in your blood, but it does get in your DNA. It embeds itself for you to do public service. And mm -hmm. being a county commissioner just extends that opportunity to keep serving and doing what you have learned to do and try to be fair 
Uh, as a commissioner, uh, that experience in law enforcement taught me many, many lessons. It mm -hmm. taught me to listen to both sides of the story. Sometimes right. you have three sides to the story, but you have to weigh all of the information that you have and then make you know, the decision that you need to make in order to uh, have a, a, the best outcome that you can. Sometimes, sometimes you don't have all the information that you need and sometimes you may, may not make a, a good decision. But you have to be able to say, hey, I made a mistake. Well, you know, as um, I'm listening to you talk about that, um, I also think about where did that come from? And before we were even on camera, you were talking a little bit about your upbringing here in Onzo County because um, your last name, Bright, is certainly an Onslow County name that's been here for generations. Please tell folks a little bit about even your earlier beginnings, even before your life in law enforcement, um, growing up here. Okay, I'll, I'll uh, tell you about the, the Bright name. Um, that came from my great-grandfather, uh -huh. um, Sam Bright. Sam Bright came here in 1865 from Washington, North Carolina. How about that? And his great Great grandfather John Bright was part of the Sir Francis Drake uh, migration and cruises from uh, England. My uh, great great grandfather on the Riggs side was Mr. Basil Riggs, and he was a uh, Confederate soldier that fought in the Civil War. Mm -hmm. And uh, his family settled here, three brothers from up near mm -hmm. uh, Newburn, somewhere up that area. When he got here, he married into the Riggs family. He settled on uh, Brighttown Road, and that road uh, eventually is where all the Brights and where my ancestors uh, grew up. That's how that road got named. And then the other road on the other end, which I still live on, is Riggs Road. And that's where the Riggs Road name came from, from the Riggs family. But it's all interrelated, and the Riggs and the Bright far, uh, family is pretty much embedded with with uh, those names all scattered about with different parts of the county and different locations. So your roots are very, very deep. Born and raised here and worked here all my life. Uh, went to school here, went, uh, went to college at Coastal Carolina. But you know, that is what you bring to this whole conversation and what you bring to, to the role as, as chairman is that insight to the history of the county and your family's ties here and also that um, just that knowledge of how the county has grown and changed so yes, so much. Yes, it's absolutely grown and changed. Uh, after um, let's say in 1976 uh, my wife and I uh, got married and I was on the police department and she was actually working as a uh, uh, records clerk in the police department and mm. uh, I had made at that time, when we got married, I had uh, got promoted to the rank of sergeant, and uh, I actually become, at night, you become the supervisor of everybody working because the top command's not there all the time. But uh, anyway, uh, sh we, we uh, dated, and uh, we got married, and after we got married, uh, I told her, I said, you know, we don't, you don't have to, but I said, it just don't seem right for uh, me to have to supervise you as my wife. So. She left and uh, took another job somewhere mm -hmm. else, and uh, then later on she became, uh, you know, the <clears throat> clerk of court's office, and right. then now she's the judicial assistant for Fourth Judicial District. She assigns all the judges. But this coming October, we'll be married uh, 40 years. Anyway, uh, our daughter come along, and uh, she was just—it just, you know, when you have kids, that mm -hmm. just changes your whole life. I mean, just totally. Uh, you have a different outlook on life. You have different priorities. And uh, then uh, we went through the process of her going to school, you know, getting her driver's license, uh, driving to school by herself, and then graduating. And then now she's uh, still enrolled and going to college. But she had been dating her high school sweetheart for three years. And uh, then she'd come home one day and she said, uh, uh, we, I think, I think we, uh, I want to go to his graduation. He, after he graduated from high school, he uh, signed up and joined the United States Air Force. Oh. And he was getting his uh, training in San Antonio at the academy. And uh, she said, I need to go down to the graduation. I said, okay. We were really leery about putting her on her plane by herself right. and her just graduated. But 
Long story short, she went down there and we had a phone call from him, or I had a phone call from him, and he said, I need to ask you something. <laughs> and so, you know, with like every other uh, proposal, I think the traditional way, which he did right, right, was to ask the dad and the mom for their blessing. I told her, I said, you know, whatever I say is not going to make any difference anyway. I said, uh, you, you guys already made your mind up. I said, but you do have my blessing. And I said, just uh, try to do right and do the right thing. And they went ahead and got married and they got married. They stayed here. He stayed here for two weeks and then he got deployed to uh, Melton Hall, England, mm. Air Force Base. And right. she said, as soon as I get, the, as soon as we get the orders, I'll be going with him. And so that oh. was another challenge. And now, now they do live in, uh, uh, Lake, actually live in Lakenheath on the uh, United States Air Force Base. And they gave you quite the um, kind of a Christmas present as well, didn't they? They were expecting a baby, oh. and uh, actually the baby was born uh, January 10th of this year. Okay. And uh, it was real. It was about two weeks early. Uh, it's a long way away to help out if you ever needed, if they mm -hmm. ever need you for anything. So they probably might be coming home this summer. Well, you know, as I'm, I'm listening to you, you know, all of all of this informs how you lead your your connection to the community your role as a, a law enforcement officer through all of those years, and then yourself as a family person, as a, a husband and a father, and now a grandfather, all of that really contributes to what you do and how you lead, and it comes through when people meet you, I'm sure. Well, that's, that's exactly right. Uh, we have, um, as commissioners, we have to represent everybody, and we have to represent people that's uh, of all walks of life. Mm -hmm. We have to represent the kids, which we have 25,000 students in Onslow mm -hmm. County. And I think I did the math on that with our population. Um, you know, that is actually one eighth of our population. Our, our school children. Our school children. And they don't have a voice as far as voting. And um, so we have to represent them and that's why it's so important for us and we're mandated by state statute to uh, provide education for our students and the folks that we represent. And uh, a lot of times we represent people that don't come up to our meeting. We represent people that you never hear from. And the only time you hear some uh, people that come to the meeting is if they've got a passion for a certain uh, mm -hmm. agenda mm -hmm. item and then they come and let you know, let us know or as a board how they feel about that. But um, I think uh, shows like this and presentations like this really lets people know uh, the perspective of a county commissioner and what we represent. A lot of people uh, don't really realize uh, what the county commissioners do. A lot of surprises, I think, probably. And it's a and the first time when I was in office back in 2000, it it was somewhat maybe six or seven or eight months before I really could even learn the language. Uh, block grants, uh, bonds, uh, government bonds. Uh, you, know, you got to understand all the aspects of what that means because you can make, a, you know, assume something and you really can't do that in this business. You got to really know <laughs> what the terms are so you can speak intelligently about it. And there's still a lot of stuff I don't know. But, you know, I, I think what I'm hearing is that it's okay to ask questions too and that every day is a learning opportunity. All, all the time. Well, you know, and, and people see you out and about, certainly in the community. We all know, um, maybe we all know, maybe we don't know your love of vintage automobiles and might see you in one of our city parades or one of our uh, township parades, really just being out there in the community. So um, I like uh, collecting old cars and I've had, I've bought some and I've kept some and I've sold some, but uh, my wife has a, uh, 65 Mustang uh, convertible that we bought in 1980 and it, we completely restored it from bumper to bumper. And then I had a 1930 Model A Ford uh, two-door sedan and I had another person that wanted it worse than I did, so got rid of that. And then I bought a, a 1929 uh, uh, Roadster, Model A Roadster convertible and uh, somebody wanted that more than I did. And so now we, we still have uh, some Mustang convertibles, still have the mm -hmm. 65, a little oh. red car. And um, my wife tells me that uh, she wants to be buried in that car. <laughs> she is, I love being in the parade with, and having the top down and let people know 
who I am, and that's right. just another way, another uh, way. Lisa, of being available and accessible to the public. That is, you know, and like I said, I've, I've seen you in lots of parades and seen you at different card shows. Um, finally, you know, as we're thinking about um, the county moving forward and you, you've accomplished so much and you've had such a long tenure, what do you think about when, when you imagine Onslow County and your dreams for Onslow County in the future? Well, I think eventually we're going to have a uh, countywide sewer. Mm -hmm. And I think being on the Wasa board, mm -hmm. uh, uh, one of the other commissioners I sat on that board, that's one thing that um, helps uh, development happen is having sewer available. So that's one thing. And I, I do see uh, Burton Park here. We're, we, we had built one shell building, we sold it, and now we're in the process of building another shell building. And believe it or not, uh, from what I'm hearing, I, I can't divulge a lot about that, but uh, we've got a tenant that's probably going to buy that building. Wow. And when we sell that building and that track of land, we'll be able to take the money. It has to be used for economic development and flip it back over and build another one, maybe bigger and better. And I foresee this park being completely full down the road. We thank you for sharing all of those great ideas and for acknowledging, you know, the role of the the employees and, and Mr. Cotton and his leadership and, and then inviting the public to be part of the process and being accessible. I think that that is, has been the message throughout our conversation today. And, and Chairman Bright, it's just been a joy having you here to share these ideas. And um, we thank you for helping us kick off our Coffee with the Commissioner series. Well, thank you very much, uh, Lisa, and this uh, opportunity is really good that we can uh, actually let people know a little bit about the people that actually make decisions for them. And um, I'd like to say that I'm always available and I try to be ac as accessible. If you call me and I don't answer, I don't call you back. It might be because I'm in a meeting like, <laughs> just like this. but. Uh, and that happens a lot, but I always uh, return my phone calls. I always try to, if I'm home, I always try to, if I'm not on the other line, and I've got three lines, so wow. I can call my phone. If it's busy, it'll let you leave a message, and then it tells you, to, you know, leaves my cell phone number. So sometimes I have my iPad ringing, uh, my home phone ringing, and my cell phone ringing, and my cu computer's buzzing, sending me a message. So uh, I think that's all part of it. And I just am thrilled to be a commissioner and thrilled to be able to sit here and say, uh, I think uh, we're moving forward and that we uh, do the best we can to protect the taxpayer's money. And anytime we can help anybody, we're here to do it. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me, Lisa. I appreciate it.